would be from Romans 15, verse 13. May the, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let the, let the Lord add a blessing to the reading and hearing of his holy word.
light, no more reaction. You're on my life center of attraction. Every beat my heartbeat is your song. Let me, 
let me throw something in your spirit that when we worship and praise God, we're joining in with the angels of God. And a service is rendered up to heaven so that God be glorified. And so when two or three are gathered together in right. his name, he's in the midst. Right. So as we worship, don't forget, it's going up to the Lord. Amen. The angels are already worshiping 24-7. But when we worship, we praise him. It's being heard in heaven. Didn't consider that. It's being heard in heaven. Won't you come up now as we let our petitions be made known unto the Lord? There's nothing, nothing too hard for God. And there's nothing that He does not see. The Bible lets us know that He never slumbers nor sleeps. He is a constant counselor. He is mighty indeed. Know what a privilege it is, as songwriters would say, to take everything to God in prayer. Don't, don't leave those things off you think you can handle. That's where you get into trouble. But everything to God in prayer. Father, we thank you for you alone are the light of the world. There is no one like you indescribable you, you, you care you're consistent you love us regardless of where we are the mountain top or valley low there's no place Lord that we can hide from you for you are there to manifest yourself in our lives to make known the mysteries of your glory and the closer we get to you, Lord, the more refreshment we get. For we begin to understand, Lord, that you are God all by yourself. And it's a privilege and a joy to be in your midst. So we celebrate this morning. Not because we've been so good or faithful or so kind, but we celebrate because you alone or the object of our affection. No one quite like you. No one on the earth, no one beneath the earth or in the heavens like you. And so we come, Lord, privileged to worship you. We come thanking you for choosing us when we're too ignorant, Lord, to choose you. You called us, Lord, out of darkness into the marvelous light. We're eternally grateful. Let your spirit fall afresh on us. Renew us like the morning dew. So that, Lord, we will have the fragrance of the flowers. That there will be something unique about us. Because we've been in the presence of the living God. And because we're in your presence every day, Lord. We should be a thankful a thankful people. So Lord, you know all our cares and woes. You know those who are in the sickness. You know those who are in the hospitals. Those, my Heavenly Father, in nursing homes. We don't have to send you. Because Lord, you're already there. But we just say in our hearts in a small way, thank you. Thank you for making your word known to us. That we have a word, a living word to, to live by. We have the Bible, we have the, the living word of God and each day that comes and manifests itself in us. And so there should be no pain, no sorrow as we look at the injustices of the world because we're not earthly creatures. We're heavenly bound spiritual beings who have been transformed by the word of the living God. So Lord, penetrate us in this service. Touch us all, Lord, and let us lay aside every dead weight 
the things that get in the way of worship so that we might worship you in spirit and in truth. I thank you now for leaders and laity alike in this church. I pray that we continue to work together as one, as your word teaches us. I thank you, Lord, for service already. I thank you for the deacons taking the time out. I thank you, Lord, for the choir taking the time out. And I thank you for those, Lord, who are standing back there, ushers and, and others, Lord, who support the church on a regular basis. Now, Lord, as we continue in service, have us to keep our minds stayed on you. For you are the source of all our inspiration. We give you praise and glory in the name that's above every name, that name Jesus. And at that name every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess. Things in heaven, things on the earth, and things beneath the earth. That you are God all by yourself. To the glory of God. We give you praise now in Jesus' wonderful name. The people of God said together, Amen, Amen, Amen. amen. God bless you. Greet somebody before you get to your seat.
like this. One more time. So glad you were here this weekend.
there are no more announcements, I will turn it over to the pulpit. Thank you. Can someone say this? Somebody been saving us? I want to thank everyone that was able to attend our renewal. I got so many compliments and I just want to say thank you all. It was amazing. It was wonderful. It was emotional. I thank Pastor for being here. <laughs> and like I said, y'all made my day. I don't want to burst anybody's bubble this morning, but if Gabby wasn't coming, I wasn't going to show up. <laughs> they don't know Some of y'all don't know who Gabby is, but any, any, anyhow, it was a, a wonderful time. And to see a couple renew their wedding vows after 13 years and still so much in love, uh, it, was, it was really a uh, a good time in the Lord as they set an example for uh, for many of us uh, in renewing their, their vows. It was good. Amen. All right, everybody, just look around. See somebody ain't smiling or feeling like they should be feeling it today. Just go over and touch them and then touch them and just say, it's going to be all right. It's, it's going to be all right. Somebody looking a little forlorn. You know that's a term for looking down, lowly, and all like that. Go over, go over and put your hand on their shoulder and tell them, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be alright. No, don't nobody touch me. Uh, but tell somebody it's gonna be, it's gonna be, gonna be alright. If you see anybody who came from, from Boston and and still not quite here, you, you, you know, when you've been on vacation, so well, go there and say hello to us. Good to see you, see you back, unless you haven't been here for a few weeks. But anyhow. Just, just tell somebody how, how good it is to be a child of the living God. Amen. 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 Better, better join the, and, and enjoy the journey. You have a choice. You can enjoy it or you can complain and be upset all the time. And just an indication that you really don't know God like you should uh, fully because that's not the kind of God we serve. Amen. He's uplifting, he's encouraging, and even when you're going through some things, he's going to be there. You have your shorts, and he's going to be there with you to help you get through the situation. So when you're walking around sad and you can't get up, it just tells me that you're not talking with the Lord. And uh, you might want to come to that prayer event that's coming up in, in, in October. And come on up, put your name on, on, on that list while, while you can. And learn more about how good the Lord is. Is that right, Felicia? Yes, sir. Amen. God, God, God bless you and so forth. God bless y'all today. I am just excited. The men uh, went on a retreat. Amen. Uh, I didn't know some people could move like they could. Reverend Dr. Marzette was. He would, he, he, somebody said all over the place and, and, and leaders all over the place that were putting it together. I didn't know who was hosting it, uh, but all of them were fired up in what was taking place uh, in the Lord. And that's the way we should be. We should always be looking at mountaintop experiences that come with serving the Lord and looking at how good God has been. It was refreshing. Amen. To go up in the mountains and, and hit them curves and everything and, and hold on to the side of the vehicle. Some, some of these drivers, praise the Lord, we, we had to anoint them to get too far away. But anyhow, it was it was a, a wonderful experience. We're going to hear some more into the second service. How many know traditionally... According to tradition, we usually have the, in the second service of men, 
We come back from the retreat. We take some time and give them some opportunities to speak as to, to what was taking place up there. Maybe what God, what God was speaking into their spirit while they were up there. And, and God wanted to speak into our spirits. It didn't it? It wasn't because it wasn't God's desire to. But we're going to look at part of that. We'll figure out how this is going to go uh, in, the, in the second service. Amen. It has some newcomers up there. Some, some really newlyweds. Uh, one of them was up there, Mr. Mr. Uh, Michael, looking, looking around like he lost something, but anyway, God has been so, so good. All right, we doing all right in, in, in service. I got some cool songs. Good to see everybody up here that come up here when they're on the court. <laughs> Excited about being up here. Yeah, woo! Oh, yeah, mercy. I remember those. I remember those days. You see, I'm, I'm here. I might be, I might be standing up, but inside, I'm really sitting down. I you know, just don't know who saw. Did I bring this up? They shouldn't let some of y'all get loose with how to print and do, do flyers. Not everybody can do flyers. We got flyers, all kind of flyers and, and inf information. Oh, I know that last year, this was a great time that we had to go at a great event. We're looking forward. There's a few more things on there. Uh, something's going to happen, take place. I heard something about a concert. Um, I heard something about the spoons. So I would suspect that we'll have some some music and and uh, Wallace games and things. That's the wow, it seems a long way, but it'll be here in a moment. October the 26th. And what, what day again was the prayer? Okay. October the 12th. I want to keep, keep that in mind and be right here at the church. And I'm also hearing something about uh, street fair. And, that, and that's when? On, on the 5th. Okay. Uh, I'm not doing that because I forgot those dates. I want it just to keep it fresh in my mind so that we can be a part of it or bring somebody else out to be part of it as, as well. Keep one another in, in prayer, some of the things we're going through. Um, want to make sure everybody lifts one another up as we go through this week. And uh, again, we're going to hear something a little later on from the men in the second service. We want to make sure that, that you hear. A, 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 amen. If nothing else, we're going to prepare to take up our tithe and offering. And I just looked around and the first person to clap was Ruth. Ruth clapped and then a few others, and some never do. But when you understand the goodness of God, being able to give, even though you may not be able to give what somebody else can give, but be grateful that you're able to give. Hey, amen. amen. Ushers are in the back, pass in the baskets.
thank you for how you taught us, Lord, to be thankful for everything that you have given us. And we are indeed thankful. We return back to you. We don't pay back. We return back to you what belongs to you. And we say thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be stewards of all that you possess. We give you praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Verb used with an object. 
to set on fire, kindle, heat intensely. A few of the words that I found in the dictionary, it's other words to it, but to set on fire. We're in a season here in California known as the wildfire season. That's according to a monthly report issued in August by the National Fire Center. It takes one small spark of fire to ignite and cause it to spread rapidly. Looking at how devastating this type of igniting could leave a negative mark in history, can you imagine how God's people could ignite the passion for prayer over this nation as we watch how prayer changes things. Some of us know the song, I Need You to Survive, okay? The words in this song that stirs the passion in me is I pray for you, you pray for me, and we're all a part of God's body. We need each other to survive. When we pray and believe God will change things, the fires of the Holy Spirit is ignited in believers to pray passionately. Let us go before the Lord in prayer. Father, I thank you for your mercies, your grace, your goodness, and your kindness, your faithfulness every day, Lord God. Oh God, even as you move in this place right now, you've been acknowledged already. I thank you for the intercessor and our pastor today, Lord God. I thank you for the movement of your prayer in this place. And even as we stand, Lord God, you, Lord God, increase in me. And as I open up my mouth, Lord God, you feel it. Fill it with what you would have your people here. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. My scripture will be coming from James, the fifth chapter, the 13th to the 16th verse. And if you have that, if I can have uh, someone read it, James 5, 13 to 16. But the faith of the people praying as well. 
It's not just for the physically sick or troubled we offer prayer. It's also for those of us that need to confess our sins to one another and pray for each other so that we can live together whole and healed. Yes, we should pray for and continue to pray for those that haven't confessed Jesus as Lord so that they may be healed also. James said, the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. This doesn't mean that that person is perfect. Because nobody's perfect but Jesus. He was the only perfect in the form of man on this earth. Only perfect one. But in the message, I was reading that, and I like to read different translations. The message said, the prayer of a person living with God is something powerful to be reckoned with. So if you're living, you're striving to live right by the power of Jesus Christ, you have that powerful, effectual prayer. When you pull down on the inside of you, you would allow the Holy Spirit to use you and to just bring that prayer up. So why do you think there were several people that called on Jesus to heal them or their family members or their servants? Well, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> because of what they heard about him, a righteous man among them that exhibit the power of healing. He was no respecter of person when there was a need for healing. He didn't just look and say, well, you're not a Jew, I can't heal you. You're not a man, I can't heal you because you're a woman. The healing, when the healing was needed, he healed, he touched with power because of his righteousness and his holiness. We, I thank God because we know that by faith, it is impossible. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. So when he showed them how and what the healing was about, the people became faithful. They became to understand that they had to understand that this man was somebody special. He was not anybody that just came among them that was common. But he had something special when he healed them. So. We know that everything that God does, he does it for a reason. He has a purpose in everything that is done in us. So when we need healing, when we know that there's something going on in our life, this is the time that we need to fall on our faces and ask God to show us what it is that we need to do. How do we need to be able to learn from this? Not God, why me? But to understand that you chose me for this particular thing. Yes. You chose me for me to go through this sickness. Yes. You chose me for me to go through this hurt and pain. So God, help me to understand. Help me to walk in this because I know it's a lesson in it. This is the way that he wants us to understand that it's not, he's not the one that causes illness. He's not the one that caused all the evil in this world, but he's the one that can heal. And if we go to him, he can do things that we think are impossible, but he does the impossible with us. I love the scripture. With God, everything is possible. There's nothing impossible or too hard for him to do. But when he continues to tell us to just fall on our face before him, or just Kneel before him. Even if you can't kneel, just lay your head on something just to imagine his, it's his lap that you're laying your head upon to pray and know that he's the comforter and he is the healer. My second point is igniting the passion for communing with our intercessor. We know who our great intercessor is. The Lord God Jesus Christ, sitting at the right hand of the Father, interceding for us, making our imperfect prayers perfect before the Father. Because we don't know what to pray, and we really have to have that power in us to understand that whew, with the fire that God has put down in us, we need to be able to ignite it in prayer. 
So passion today in some of our lives is a powerful and compelling emotion of feeling of love or hate that either strengthens or destroys our relationships. What passion do you want to have in this day? What passion do you think can carry you through the week, can carry you through on your job? The passion of God in your life. The passion of prayer. And it's, you don't have to be, you know, all open and, hey, hallelujah, this and that to show the passion. You have the passion within you. The passion that and if you walk in passion, your head is up high. Like Pastor Tom would say, if you walk in passion, you're not looking down at the ground because you know the God that you serve. If you walk with this passion, knowing that he is the one that continues to say that he is the lover of our soul. He is the lifter of our head. And we acknowledge him in every way that we can. Just that passion for him is so powerful that some days I don't even know how to handle it. Some days I just want to be able to just be in his presence and not do anything. But he has already showed me that the passion, I have to have that passion or there's no communing with him. Jesus knew we would need a helper to live in this life as followers. If we think about the gift of the Holy Spirit, how it ignites our desire to pray daily, to stay in communion with our intercessor, Jesus Christ, our prayers would and are the catalyst to get us through the daily activities that we have to go through. You know, each and every day we have a situation in our lives. We might not acknowledge it, we might not even want to acknowledge it, but who woke you up early this morning? Who understood and knew what you would be facing today? Who called us into prayer with him before leaving our homes? Who called us into prayer before moving our car? Nobody but Jesus. Nobody but Jesus had our plans and our past already before him. I was on the prayer line um, Thursday, and we usually sing a song. And I know I don't sing, but I can make a joyful noise. And I know the words, so when the words come out, the Lord knows what I'm saying. <laughs> and it was like, if you ever need a friend that sticks close, In this place, 
And I, I'm not talking about this building right now. I'm talking about this place. This is the place where he dwells, where the Holy Spirit dwells. And he wants us to be able to just live for those promises that he gave us. He's promising us. And this is something that even in the Bible, his word will never fall away. His word is always true. So listening is an important part of communing with our Savior as well as talking to him. We need to just stop, meditate, and listen to where he's sending us what he's talking about. Because as we continue to pray, we say during and after our prayer, we need to listen. Pray to understand and recognize the prompting of the Holy Spirit. There will be occasions we won't know how or what to pray. This is why God's word is there for us. In Romans 8.26, he says, in the same way, the Spirit, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, no other Spirit but the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. We all have weaknesses. Weaknesses that we have to pray for every day. It's a battle because we know that we're still in the flesh. And we're among people that are in the flesh that are not among the Lord people at all times. But we still have to remember we have weaknesses. But we know who has our strength. Amen. This is why we pray every day for strength. Amen. Not my strength, but your strength, Lord. Not my will, but your will, Lord. So we know that God, God will tell us and say, we do not know what we ought to pray. For the Spirit himself intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. Yes. Not our will. The Spirit hears our prayers. The Spirit knows our prayers. And as he intercedes for us, God's will will be done in our life. And that's what we want. We want God's will. I know I do. Because I know if I did what I wanted to, that would not be God's will. All right. So we want God's will at all times because I know I can't walk, I can't talk, and I can't even speak without asking for his will because as we go, and you know, even when we ask for God's will, the things come up and the enemy hears us. He knows everything, you know, that we are going to say. He, he plans to cause disruption. He plans to cause confusion because he knows where we are. He knows that we're in a place where we want to exalt the Lord. He hates God and he hates the people of God. But we know that we have a conqueror and we are more than conquerors. That we have victory in God because he has no winning here. We win. As we look at Revelation at the end, it tells you who wins when we do what the Lord calls us to do. But I thank God that he continued to allow us to know that it's in his will. As believers, we are not left to our own resources to cope with problems. We all have problems. Tell me, anybody here don't have any problems except for this front row and Pastor Tom? <laughs> the front row, now, this is where, you know, where we sometimes wish we were when we go through things. They are, look at them, they are at so much peace with the way that they're sitting there now. But when we come in, we want to leave all our problems, all our baggage on the outside. We want to be able to just sit up under the word of God. It's only for maybe 30 minutes, but when that word is planted, it's there. You can't move it. We ask God to just move in hearts and minds as he continued to bless us with his word. With God's spirit helping us pray, we don't have to be afraid to come before him with our cares. The word instructs us to cast all our anxieties on him because he cares for us. And that's in 1 Peter 5 and 7. Ask the Holy Spirit to intercede for you according to God's will. He does our praying for us. Even when we're talking, you know, and not listening. Ask the Holy Spirit because he's still hearing what you're saying. He still knows that 
This is what he is. He's the helper. God said he would send us a helper. This is what Jesus promised in his word. So today as we refer to the passion of communication, the main focus is how we're communicating with Jesus in prayer. We don't have to always be yelling out. He can hear. He's not deaf. We don't have to worry about if we pray like a corporate prayer that everybody's praying. He welcomes that. He knows our hearts. And we don't have to go afraid to bow down before the Lord in prayer. But we have to know who we are praying to. Amen. We have to go with reverence. Yes. We have to understand that even if we don't say anything but Jesus, that's a prayer. Right. We can't understand anything else. We know that he, his name is all powerful. Yes. And that is a prayer. I was, um, he said, cast all your anxieties on him. On uh, Tuesday, well, Sunday, my car seat on the passenger side went off of the cable and went off the line and went over toward the door. And I was said, okay, Lord, I'm going to take this car to Mercedes Benz and they are going to tell me what's happening with the diagnostic test. So I took the car, I left it, and the guy called me and told me that it would be $2,447 to put a new motor in, a cable, and this and that. So I said, okay, I'm coming to get my car. <laughs> and I'm bringing the loaner back. So I went and got my car, and all I said was, okay, Lord, this car is in your hand. You blessed me with it, so it's in your hand. I went to do my shopping, whatever it was I needed from Sprouts. I went and got that. I went home, took my stuff up out of the car, because my husband had looked at it. He tried to move it. He couldn't do it. And um, I took my stuff out of the car, and I know this was the Holy Spirit. I know, because I, me, myself, was, okay, well, they want all this money. I am not paying no $3,000 for no car seat right now. So I, I said, when I got out the car, all I heard was, trust me. All right. I touched that button on the side of my car seat. Do you know yeah. that car seat went yeah. back into, hallelujah, back into alignment and did not move, but it was on the cable, and I thank God because I trust him. I trust him. And, and this was not a prayer that I did yelling and crying. But he heard my call, and I know that God hears us, and he answered, because it would have ended up being almost $3,000, but I only paid $92.50 for the diagnostic test. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. He said, humble yourself and pray, and seek his face. He said, when we seek him, we will find him. We have to seek him diligently. We can't just turn around because we have problems. We can't just give up because there's no giving up in him. He said, I will supply your every need according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. He said that he is my provider. He, Lord God, he has provided for us in so many ways that we don't even understand. But I don't even want to understand. I just want to revel in it and thank him for what he's doing because both of us are retired and I know it's nothing but the goodness of the Lord that have kept us and that continues to keep us and I just always want to acknowledge him because when people say God bless you, yes he did and I say and he does so I know he does I know he's a good God, he's a merciful God he's a gracious God and we just give you all the praise God in this place, all the honor all the glory is yours God there's no other way that we can do but to love on your Lord Jesus your word God your word says that you would never leave us or forsake us and I believe your word God I believe your word Father thank you Lord, thank you 
today as we refer to the passion of communication. God, I thank you. This is about our passion in a positive way to grow closer to the one who sits at the right hand of the Father interceding for us. For Jesus, it's about the burning desire God has placed in believers to commune with him and pray for ourselves and others as we try to ignite our relationship by becoming intimate or more intimate with him daily. You know, that word intimate, I love it because it's into me see. I see that all the time as into me see. He in, he sees in me and he still loves me in spite of me. I thank God because there's nothing too hard for him to do and he loves us unconditionally. He doesn't change on us. He's always the same. And I thank him. He tells us, you know what, that it's about the burning desire. It's a burning desire. That's what the Holy Spirit is. He's full of fire. So it's about the burning desire for him. And as we try to uh, continue prayer is not a means of coercing God to do what we want. We can't coerce God to do anything. We can't send him anywhere, you know, Lord, go to that nursing home or go over there. He's already there. He is already there. He just wants us to join him. He just wants us to be able to just intercede for others, you know, that can't intercede for themselves. So it's a process of recognizing his power and plan for our lives, like in Jeremiah. He tells in Jeremiah 29, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Oh God. Plans to give you a hope and a future. I know that God's plans is above all plans. His plans. And then when he say, I, he declares. When he declares something, it's already done. That word declares is so powerful. We don't even understand why it's there. And then sometimes you see it in um, the small letters. I see it myself as the large letters of declare. He declared this. God, you declared this for me. And he said to not to harm you as we know that there's nothing, nothing that he wouldn't protect us from. So I thank God in prayer we yield ourselves, our lives, and circumstances to him and trust him to act on our behalf when we pray. Because we know that he has heard us. My third point, igniting sacrificial prayer that includes fasting. That scripture, Matthew 17, 21, I found that in the Amplifier, Bible, and in the King James. But his words say, but this kind of demon does not go out except by prayer and fasting. This scripture is not found in the NIV translation. This is the reason I have other translations besides the NIV because we use the NIV here at Mount Moriah, right? The father of a demonic possessed son brought him to Jesus after the disciples couldn't deliver him. Jesus rebuked the demon and it came out of the boy immediately and he was healed from that moment. The disciples came to Jesus in private and they asked, why couldn't we drive it out? He replied, because you have so little faith. But this kind of demon does not go out except by prayer and fasting. We have to understand that fasting is a tool as well. Fasting and prayer is beneficial spiritually and physically. It gives us a chance to truly offer our bodies as a living sacrifice for cleansing and renewed strength. Fasting is an important spiritual tool that the Bible teaches us in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. It's time for clarity on what our assignments are to glorify God going forward without question but by faith. True fasting is more than what we don't eat. It's not about not eating. True fasting, the passion of prayer. And it's, you don't have to be, you know, all 
open and hey, hallelujah, this and that to show the passion. You have the passion within you. The passion that and if you walk in passion, your head is up high. Like Pastor Tom would say, if you walk in passion, you're not looking down at the ground because you know the God that you serve. If you walk with this passion, knowing that he is the one that continues to say that he is the lover of our soul. He is the lifter of our head. And we acknowledge him in every way that we can. Just that passion for him is so powerful that some days I don't even know how to handle it. Some days I just want to be able to just be in his presence and not do anything. But he has already showed me that the passion, I have to have that passion or there's no communing with him. Jesus knew we would need a helper to live in this life as followers. If we think about the gift of the Holy Spirit, how it ignites our desire to pray daily, to stay in communion with our intercessor, Jesus Christ, our prayers would and are the catalyst to get us through the daily activities that we have to go through. You know, each and every day we have a situation in our lives. We might not acknowledge it. We might not even want to acknowledge it. But who woke you up early this morning? Who understood and knew what you would be facing today? Who called us into prayer with him before leaving our homes? Who called us into prayer before moving our car? Nobody but Jesus. Nobody but Jesus had our plans and our past already before him. I was on the prayer line um, Thursday and we usually sing a song. And I know I don't sing. But I can make a joyful noise. And I know the words. So when the words come out, the Lord knows what I'm saying. <laughs> and it was like, if you ever need a friend that sticks close His word is always true. 
So listening is an important part of communing with our Savior as well as talking to him. We need to just stop, meditate, and listen to where he's sending us what he's talking about. Because as we continue to pray, we say during and after our prayer, we need to listen. Pray to understand and recognize the prompting of the Holy Spirit. There will be occasions we want to know how or what to pray. This is why God's word is there for us. In Romans 8.26, he says, in the same way, the Spirit, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, no other spirit but the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. We all have weaknesses. Weaknesses that we have to pray for every day. It's a battle because we know that we're still in the flesh and we are among people that are in the flesh that are not among the Lord people at all times. But we still have to remember we have weaknesses, but we know who has our strength. Amen. This is why we pray every day for strength. Amen. Not my strength, but your strength, Lord. Not my will, but your will, Lord. So we know that God, God will tell us and say, we do not know what we ought to pray. For the Spirit himself intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. Yes. Not our will. The Spirit hears our prayers. The Spirit knows our prayers. And as he intercedes for us, God's will will be done in our life. And that's what we want. We want God's will. I know I do. Because I know if I did what I wanted to, that would not be God's will. All right. So we want God's will at all times because I know I can't walk, I can't talk, and I can't even speak without asking for his will because as we go, and you know, even when we ask for God's will, the things come up and the enemy hears us. He knows everything, you know, that we are going to say. He, he plans to cause disruption. He planned to cause confusion because he knows where we are. He knows that we're in a place where we want to exalt the Lord. He hates God and he hates the people of God. But we know that we have a conqueror and we are more than conquerors. That we have victory in God because he has no winning here. We win. As we look at Revelation at the end, it tells you who wins when we do what the Lord calls us to do. But I thank God that he continued to allow us to know that it's in his will. As believers, we are not left to our own resources to cope with problems. We all have problems. Tell me, anybody here don't have any problems except for this front row and Pastor Tom? <laughs> Front row. Now, this is where, you know, where we sometimes wish we were when we go through things. They are, look at them. They are at so much peace with the way that they're sitting there now. But when we come in, we want to leave all our problems, all our baggage on the outside. We want to be able to just sit under the Word of God. It's only for maybe 30 minutes, but when that word is planted, it's there. You can't move it. We ask God to just move in hearts and minds as he continues to bless us with his word. With God's spirit helping us pray, we don't have to be afraid to come before him with our cares. The word instructs us to cast all our anxieties on him because he cares for us. And that's in 1 Peter 5 and 7. Ask the Holy Spirit to intercede for you according to God's will. He does our praying for us. Even when we're talking, you know, and not listening. Ask the Holy Spirit because he's still hearing what you're saying. He still knows that this is what he is. He's the helper. God said he would send us a helper. This is what Jesus promised in his word. So today as we refer to the passion of communication the main focus is how we're communicating with Jesus in prayer. We don't have to always be yelling out. He can hear. He's not deaf. 
We don't have to worry about if we pray like a corporate prayer that everybody's praying. He welcomes that. He knows our hearts. And we don't have to go afraid to bow down before the Lord in prayer. But we have to know who we are praying to. Amen. We have to go with reverence. We have to understand that even if we don't say anything but Jesus, that's a prayer. Right. We can't understand anything else. We know that He, His name is all powerful. Yeah. And that is a prayer. I was, um, you say, cast all your anxieties on him? On uh, Tuesday, well, Sunday, my car seat on the passenger side went off of the cable and it went off the line and went over toward the door. And I was saying, okay, Lord, I'm going to take this car to Mercedes Benz and they are going to tell me what's happening with the diagnostic test. So I took the car, I left it, and the guy called me and told me that it would be $2,447 to put a new motor in, a cable, and this and that. So I said, okay, I'm coming to get my car. <laughs> and I'm bringing the loaner back. So I went and got my car, and all I said was, okay, Lord, this car is in your hand. You blessed me with it, so it's in your hand. I went to do my shopping, whatever it was I needed from Sprouts. I went and got that. I went home, took my stuff up out of the car, because my husband had looked at it. He tried to move it. He couldn't do it. And um, I took my stuff out of the car, and I know this was the Holy Spirit. I know, because I... Me, myself, was, okay, well, they want all this money. Right. I am not paying no $3,000 for no car seat right now. <laughs> so I, I said, when I got out the car, all I heard was, trust me. All right. I touched that button on the side of my car seat. Do you know that yeah. car seat went yeah. back into, hallelujah, back into a
and He loves us unconditionally. He doesn't change on us. He's always the same. And I thank Him. He tells us, you know what? That it's about the burning desire. It's a burning desire. That's what the Holy Spirit is. He's full of fire. So it's about the burning desire for Him. And as we try to... Uh, Continued prayer is not a means of coercing God to do what we want. We can't coerce God to do anything. We can't send him anywhere, you know, Lord, go to that nursing home or go over there. He's already there. He is already there. He just wants us to join him. He just wants us to be able to just intercede for others, you know, that can't intercede for themselves. So it's a process of recognizing his power and plan for our lives, like in Jeremiah. He tells in Jeremiah 29, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Oh God, plans to give you a hope and a future. I know that God's plans is above all plans. His plans and then when he say, I, he declares, when he declares something, it's already done. That word declares is so powerful, we don't even understand why it's there. And then sometimes you see it in um, the small letters. I see it myself as the large letters of declare. He declared this. God, you declared this for me. And he said to not to harm you, as we know that there's nothing, nothing that he wouldn't protect us from. So I thank God in prayer we yield ourselves, our lives, and circumstances to him and trust him to act on our behalf when we pray. Because we know that he has heard us. My third point, igniting sacrificial prayer that includes fasting. That scripture, Matthew 17, 21, I found that in the Amplifier, Bible, and in the King James. But his word said, but this kind of demon does not go out except by prayer and fasting. This scripture is not found in the NIV translation. This is the reason I have other translations besides the NIV because we use the NIV here at Mount Moriah, right? The father of a demonic possessed son brought him to Jesus after the disciples couldn't deliver him. Jesus rebuked the demon and it came out of the boy immediately and he was healed from that moment. The disciples came to Jesus in private and they asked, why couldn't we drive it out? He replied, because you have so little faith. But this kind of demon does not go out except by prayer and fasting. We have to understand that fasting is a tool as well. Fasting and prayer is beneficial spiritually and physically. It gives us a chance to truly offer our bodies as a living sacrifice for cleansing and renewed strength. Fasting is an important spiritual tool that the Bible teaches us in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. It's time for clarity on what our assignments are to glorify God going forward without question but by faith. True fasting is more than what we don't eat. It's not about not eating. True fasting, but it's pleasing God by faith applying his word to our lives. We have to see God's will about fasting at any time for directions as individuals or a group with a goal already established. Always using wisdom. Read the word about fasting or seek counsel from the pastor or someone that has knowledge about what to do if you're not familiar with fasting. Consider your health status and medications before fasting, if you have never fasted. So, in closing, this is my first close. <laughs> I'm looking at this very coolly. Prayer can be a very passionate time spent communing with our Lord, believing in faith, 
we are, we are heard. Believe that as we strive to live righteously in this world, not thinking of prayer as a chore or a list of wants or a favor to God, he hears us. In Jeremiah 3 and 33, he says, Call, and I will answer and show you great and unsearchable things, things you do not know. So this is another scripture that confirms it. All we have to do is call on him. Igniting the passion in our prayers is when we allow the Holy Spirit to set the fire that will cause our fervent prayers to reach heaven. Remember, Jesus' word in Matthew, some of these will not go out except by prayer and fasting. So have faith. Igniting the prayer, passion for prayers is setting a fire that sparks a closer relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you for listening. Amen. Father, we thank you. We praise your name, Lord God. Because there's none like you. You are so powerful and so loving and kind and generous to us that we, God, can do anything but call on you and ask you, Lord, to just have your way. I pray for those that are sent up under your word that the word will be what is needed in their lives today, that you will just continue to move in a mighty way in each one of us. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 And this is the time that we can come before the Lord. And if you don't know this God that we're talking about, the one that we can call on and pray to, this is the time to come forward. And someone will be able to just give you a word about what it is that you need today, or just let you know that Jesus is the one that hears and answers our prayers. If you're looking at our need, special prayer, come forth. And if you're looking for a church home, this is the place, place to be. We have a praying, praying ministerial staff. And I thank God for prayer warriors. And we stand around knowing that the power of God falls down when we call on Him. And if there's anyone that is looking for special prayer, we have deacons that will pray with you. We have ministers. We have our pastor. I mean, it's no reason to leave away from here without prayer. So now, turn this over to the choir.
and ready to receive a blessing from you. <coughs> Who can bless us like God? Ain't nobody bless us like God. Thank you, choir. Now, we did what the Lord has allowed us to do. And I don't know if there's anything else that needs to be announced or whatever, but we have the 11 o'clock service coming up with my uh, vivacious goddaughter. <laughs> and uh, just the things that Pastor Thomas said would happen with the men as well. So as we prepare to stand, oh, I'm sorry, benevolence offering.
without we thank you because we know that all things are possible through you, Lord God. We thank you for just allowing us to be in your presence today. And Lord God, as we leave here today, Lord, that is nothing too hard for you to do in our lives as we lift up our hearts and our minds to you, knowing that Jesus is real. In the name of Jesus we pray, amen. Amen.